I don't know about any of you, but if the WWE doing more of these international pay-per-views means that they're going to be doing pay-per-views on Saturdays and Saturday afternoon, then sign me the hell up. I'm so over the Sunday night pay-per-views, even the Saturday night pay-per-views, while better than Sunday night still, right? Like, give me this Saturday afternoon shit all day long. Anyways, Night of Champions. They're in good old Saudi Arabia. Wondering how this show was going to play out. And really, starting off with, this was going to be the culmination of the tournament to crown a new WWE World Heavyweight Championship or champion or whatever the fuck it's going to be called. And you're getting Seth Rollins versus AJ Styles. So I think most everybody reasonably predicted that Seth Rollins was going to be the guy coming out of this match. But, you know, how good could this match be? It has the potential to be pretty good. And to be fair, it was good. And there was no better way to cap off a Night of Champions show than with crowning a new world champion. Except for the fact that this match kicked off the fucking show. The match was fine. But let's not kid ourselves here. This ultimately felt like a decent match for a mid-card title. And when you look at the way that this new world title was positioned on the card, that's exactly what the fuck it was. It was a match for a mid-card title. That's what you got. I mean, you could have really put this in a different spot on the card. I'm sorry. You have an Intercontinental Championship match. You've got two women's championship matches. You could have started off with one of them. And instead, they went in this dumb dick direction. And I'm sorry, it was dumb dick to do. Uh, but the, like I said, the match was solid, but it was still ultimately for a mid-card title. You can put world championship all you want on it. That doesn't change the reality. We all know this feels like a second-class belt. Uh, Trish Stratus versus Becky Lynch. I, and I saw that Trish Stratus was clearly going for the you'd still put babies in me cat suit, which the answer, of course, is yes. Absolutely. Becky Lynch embracing her inner Kill Bill with um, Uma Thurman look with that outfit that she wore. Uh, as far as this match, I don't think the buildup was particularly great, but you know, you're talking about a matchup of two different generations, the established veteran in Becky Lynch and the young lion from the past in Trish Stratus. Uh, introducing Zoe Stark here was a nice little wrinkle, a surprise. Um, at least I can say this, is I felt like a lot of people were kind of aligned with me and agreeing with me that Trish needed to win this. You gotta let the young lions roar. But more importantly, you can't bring back the legends like the Trish Stratuses of the world and they always put somebody over. Like, if you say the ultimate outcome is they need to put over the current talent, fine, but you gotta throw them a frickin' burn here once in a while. That's why I always think there's a diminishing return with John Cena whenever he makes a return appearance because he's always jobbing out. Like, if you're gonna do that just to have him come in to job out, a decade after it freaking matters, then it doesn't really matter that much. So we'll see how they pay this off, whether it's at Money in the Bank or they stretch this out maybe all the way until SummerSlam. Uh, the Intercontinental Championship, this match did its job in terms of it gave the Saudi crowd just enough of a reason to believe that Mustafa Ali had a chance to actually win here and then <laughs> smacking him back to reality and saying Gunther is that dude. And which he is. It was a fine match for what it was. But frankly, I come back to the placement of Seth Rollins and AJ Styles for your new world championship. This Intercontinental Championship match could have kicked off the show. The crowd was really into it. It would have been a just perfectly fine starter match for this show. The Raw Women's Championship. Nothing says Vince Logic more than two SmackDown talents fighting for a Raw title. Right? Let's book ourselves into a dumb dick corner where you're going to have to do some type of belt swap that looks really, really stupid. You can blame that on Hunter. You can blame that on Vince. I blame it on all of them. Why would you book yourself into this fucking spot? And I don't know about anybody else, but this long title reign by Bianca Belair just has been kind of underwhelming. And I, I tweeted about this during the show. Maybe part of that is because you've got really long title reigns for Roman Reigns and Gunther as well. So having three really long title reigns, something gets kind of lost in the sauce. Maybe it's just the fact of a lack of interesting and compelling storylines that Bianca was involved in as champion. Um, probably a combination of that, right? But that said, I was still surprised they had Asuka beat her here. Especially because, again, Asuka's a fucking SmackDown talent last time I checked. That's why you do the whole draft shit, right? The hell is the point? Like, why would you book yourself into this spot? 
And knowing more likely than not, it means you might even have a frickin' return match. Oh, fucking Christ. Whatever. <laughs> Sometimes using logic and WWE in the same sentence just doesn't really flow together. The SmackDown Women's Championship, Natalia versus Rhea Ripley. It's Vince logic again as two Raw talents are fighting for a SmackDown title. Because of course they freaking are. You know, props to Rhea Ripley, by the way, if you're not going to be able to wear the booty shorts, you're going to go full latex S&M look and fucking tell the Saudis to stick it. That's right. That's what you do. Um, but for those of you that were thinking, like, this is going to be a long competitive match because it was Natalia's birthday, uh, what WWE have you been fucking watching? Of course it was going to be a squash match. And frankly, it should have been a fucking squash match. You're trying to put over Rhea big here. You want to make her a big fucking deal. You're trying to almost book her like a damn Charlotte, dot, 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 but way better in every fucking way imaginable. It needed to be a squash. Not every match needs to be long, drawn out, 50-50 affairs. This shit went just fine, perfect length, perfect everything. I loved it. I can't say the same, though, for Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar. I personally was a little confused because I, I could have sworn that Cody Rhodes was personally against uh, doing shows in Saudi Arabia. Oh, wait. Cody's a hypocrite? You mean he's full of shit? The hell you say? Nah. Not, 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 not Cody Rhodes. Not Cody loser Rhodes. He ended racism. How could he possibly be for doing shows in Saudi Arabia after being against them? That doesn't make any sense. Anyways, if they wanted to avoid the Cody Cena allegations, this was not the match to fucking do it. And look, I'm not even going to get into the semantics of whether or not a, a Kimura arm lock engaged long enough is eventually going to cause somebody to pass out due to pain. Like, I'll let others kind of debate the merits of that. I understand what they were really going for here. You need to Brock to win. And if you're going to do some type of fidget where Cody doesn't Tap out. I have no issue with that. Like, project him as being a tough guy, a fighter. Make him an underdog. That's fine. But you really stretch the bounds of believability and credibility when you're having him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a broken arm and be put in a Kimura lock for that long multiple times. Yeah, like, I call bullshit on that. So, it was one of those things I could understand where they were going for. And on the surface, maybe it feels like it works. But on the other hand, it doesn't help fight the Cody Cena allegations, at least in my mind. And it was kind of borderline ridiculous. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, but thankfully, we got to the main event. And, and honestly, this is the match that should have main event. You can say, well, you're, you're doing a new world champion. Nah. Like, I agree, the new world championship shouldn't open this show. But it also shouldn't have closed this show. The Tag Team Championship match, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens defending against Roman and Solo. This needed a main event, especially when you look at where they ended up going. You know, from the very beginning, the crowd was incredibly hot for this match. As this crowd was really good this time. This is better than some of the previous Saudi shows that I remember. Uh, maybe it's because they're a little less, maybe on the dignitary and politician side and more of regular people being able to attend. That could be it. Maybe it's them allowing the people to like kind of enjoy the event a little bit more and not trying to be so structured and rehearsed. Maybe. Uh, but, you know, Sami Zayn speaking the local language certainly got a great reaction. Um, of course, the Usos had to get involved in this damn match and ultimately screw everything up. And has Jimmy been drinking again? The hell is he thinking? How dare he turn against the tribal chief like that? But, you know, for those that were wondering, well, how are you going to do this? Are you actually going to pin Roman here? No, you can't have Roman do any jobs until he actually drops the world title. Can't do it. So, the way this was executed, the way this was done was brilliant. When Jimmy hit that second super kick on Roman to where people could say, this wasn't just an overreaction, now it's intentional. Like, the pop was fucking massive. And now you're wondering what's coming next. And that's the key thing, right? Like how many times you watch a WWE show and you're not really thinking about what's coming next. You don't particularly fucking care. Now you look at it and you say, I wonder what's going to happen next. Where are they going to take this from here? That, oh my God, give me a little cliffhanger. Leave me wanting more type of feeling that wrestling used to give us that doesn't give us nearly enough now.
and I thought it was fascinating. I think it was Alfred Kanua, um, Kanua said that Cody Rhodes is the best storyteller in wrestling. Like, that is a really bold and frankly dumbass take, no offense, when Roman Reigns exists. I can't imagine looking at Cody Rhodes and sitting there and trying to sell a logical story around this guy being able to be in a Kimura lock for seven, eight minutes with this freaking broken arm and not tapping and then look at Roman Reigns and all the shit that goes down and think that Rome is not the best storyteller in wrestling today. Like the bloodline in general. Jay's a great storyteller. Jimmy's a great storyteller. Solo in his own way is a good storyteller. Like this hooked you. It makes you want more. And props to Sammy. Yet another pay-per-view main event for him in 2023. He's having a hell of a year. But in general, I thought this was a solid show. I enjoyed it. And maybe if no other reason, the fact that it happened on a Saturday fucking afternoon and I could enjoy the rest of my goddamn day. So they're doing Money in the Bank in London, I think it is, in Ju July. Another Saturday afternoon show. Sign me up for that shit.